Roe v. Wade, pro-choice pickers and choosers, and my message to both sides of the divide. There's a lot to cover. I'm not pulling any punches or jumping on any bandwagons, and my show starts right now. Well, folks, unless you're living in a cave or under a well-placed rock, you've heard the news and the ruling that has overturned Roe v. Wade and turned the country upside down. And if you haven't noticed, the left is pretty unhappy about it. The Democrats found the one issue that could get their base to the polls in November and into the streets for both peaceful and violent protests. Looking for one of these pro-abortion protesters that appears sane, stable, and showered is like a very weird and aggressive game of Where's Waldo? I have yet to spot Waldo, by the way. And by the looks of a lot of these protesters, I'm not sure a sex strike is really necessary. <laughs> but while I believe in the right to protest, peaceably assemble, and petition the government for address of grievances, the First Amendment does not protect the lawless, violent, and vile actions we've seen in the last several days. Go ahead, be mad as hell, but that doesn't give you the right to break the law, to assault officers, to threaten others, or vandalize property. I know the summer riot season of 2020 made you think otherwise, but no. And elected Democrats like AOC are stoking the flames and all just days after the January 6th political theater hearings to boot. If she were a Republican, she'd be banned on social media, censored, or worse. But AOC, Maxine Waters, and Chuck Schumer get away with it because they're raging libs and the rules don't apply to them. And just like the rules don't apply to them, logical and intellectual consistency doesn't either. It's worth noting for the last month, it's been law-abiding gun owners blamed for killing children. Now we're back to the left losing their minds they might have on-demand abortions restricted. It's like they flip their Sharpie protest banners over every other week. One side says, let us kill babies willy-nilly, and the other says, save the children. I mean, my God. But that's not the only cognitively brain-dead or dissonant stance they hold. I wish these liberals would have been this fired up when the government shut down our economy for months on end, robbed us of our right to work, worship, and gather, and then forced masks on faces and vaccines in arms. Rights, am I right? And all y'all saying the vaccine mandates are different because they were for public health have no freaking argument because your beloved vaccine doesn't prevent infection or spread. You're full of it. Now listen, I'm going to address the Roe v. Wade decision itself and at length in my final thoughts. And yeah, my take is probably going to shock some of you and piss the rest of you off. But that aside, I will always call it hypocrisy when I see it on the right and the left. But first... Speaking of vaccine mandates, up next, we're going to dive into a heartbreaking controversy taking place right here in Nashville, Tennessee. That beautiful baby there is being denied a heart transplant unless his parents fully vaccinate him. More on this absolutely despicable situation next. There's a lot of controversy surrounding babies, health, and mandates right now, and this next story combines all three. When it comes to pro-choice, the left is highly selective. Many of the most vocal and vile want on-demand abortions up until birth because they see it as a right. But yet those same folks label those of us who chose not to be COVID-vaxxed as selfish for not sticking out our arms one, two, three, or four times. Now, it's bad enough that vaccination became a condition of entry, employment, and basic life. But the story of baby August takes that lunacy a step further. Baby August is just six months old and his heart is failing. He needs a heart transplant, but Vanderbilt Hospital right down the road here in Nashville, Tennessee, is denying him that procedure unless his parents fully vaccinate him. So here to tell us more and what we can do to help August is August family spokesperson and congressional candidate Robbie Starbuck. Robbie, this went wild, at least here locally in Nashville over the weekend. You posted all about it. People were really outraged, and I think a lot of people saw it just as myself and thought, this can't really be happening. They can't be denying a six-month-old baby a much-needed heart transplant because the parents choose not to vaccinate. 
Tell everybody what's going on here. I actually thought the same thing you did when it first came to me. So a friend of the family said, you know, they'd love to have your help getting getting help here. And uh, I said, there's no way that's exactly what's happening. I'm going to talk to the mom and look into this. So I talked to the mom and she lays everything out. I see everything and go, they're really doing this. And so essentially, and one of the important things here is the cardiology team has done a great job. But once it got to the transplant um, scenario, the transplant doctor is the one who said, no, you have to have the child fully vaccinated or he's not getting a transplant. And what this is his name just so that we're Dr. all Dr. David Burrell. Okay. And so that's that's the story here. And essentially, he would not back down. They had multiple meetings with this doctor, and he continued to make this demand. Now, so once I got involved, I got the family legal representation, and that legal representation got in contact with Vandy. And when they did that, we did at least get over the weekend confirmation they're going to drop any sort of COVID requirement. They still say they highly suggest it, which in itself should concern everybody that a medical facility is suggesting highly that a six-month-year-old child with a failing heart get a vaccine that we've seen causes myocarditis and pericarditis and other heart issues. Doesn't make any logical sense, but they have dropped that as a requirement, but they're still requiring other things that the parents are you know, religiously and medically opposed to. And other doctors have reached out saying... The baby should absolutely not have these before he gets transplant surgery because his immune system is already in a very difficult place. I think a lot of parents know that if your child has a cold, a doctor won't vaccinate them. They'll say reschedule to when they're healthy because their immune system is already fighting something. You don't want to combine that with the pressure this puts on their immune system. So why a doctor who pledges an oath to do no harm would then ask a parent to do this just I mean, it blows my mind. So I think one of the things we have to work towards here isn't just fixing the situation for August, but it's also making sure that we get legislation down, not just in Tennessee, but nationally, that says you can never do this to a family ever again. Nobody should ever suffer what these parents are suffering through to have to worry about their kid's life and weigh those options of do we do something that we're morally and religiously opposed to in order to have our child stay alive or do we stand our ground and risk that something terrible happens? And, you know, that's something no parent should ever have to decide. But something terrible could happen either way because, as yeah. you mentioned, other doctors are saying, exactly. hey, this is a six-month-old that is in a really tough spot already, and you want to pump him full of all of these vaccines. By the way, the COVID vaccine, thank God they dropped that. That was just approved by the FDA yeah. for, for those in that age category. We still don't know the long-term effects, the side effects. We don't know any of that. The fact that these doctors at a very reputable and very esteemed University Vanderbilt Health and Medical Center – the fact that they would push this on a six-month-old, I, for the life of me, cannot understand it. That's why I thought that there has to be something else here. But what has the family told you where they are right now in terms of their decision, what they're going to do? What is their timeline like? What options do they have at this point? They're going through a really hard time, obviously. I mean, August, one of the things we looked at was trying to get him to other facilities, and that's not possible. They had a meeting over the weekend with some of the cardiology team who've been fantastic, and they said August is in no position to be able to be transferred. So unfortunately, we have to come to an agreement of some sort with Vandy, so that's why we have the lawyers involved working with their general counsel to try to get somewhere. But the parents really don't have a lot of time, and neither does Vandy. I mean, at the end of the day, we need to all break away from the debate of should they get the vaccine, should they not? Because the reality, this is a six-month-old child. Whether you disagree or agree with the parent's position, this is a six-month-old who can't voice his own position in this. And to say we're going to essentially sentence him to death if we don't like his parent's decision, that's evil. I mean, that's de demonic in my opinion. I mean, you can't, you can't find any sort of rationale for making that okay. And I think that we've got to get back to a semblance of sanity where not everything's an agenda. And it's very clear. I think there's a lot of doctors throughout COVID who have, you know, really shown the world that they have a God complex. And this has got to stop. And we've got to have laws that protect people from making sure that they can't do this. But one of the ways that people can help the family is they've got to give, send, go. And it's givesendgo.com slash fight for August. They have immense bills. They've got other kids, but they're with August 24-7. So if people can donate and help the family get through this, that in itself is a huge weight off them. So I hope people can, you know, jump on board and be a part of August's Army. And I hope that there is some pressure here. I mean, I was so happy to have you be able to come and speak on behalf of the family. But there needs to be pressure put on Vanderbilt. They don't want this PR nightmare. You know, this might have been something that could pass in Los Angeles or Seattle or Portland or New York. Not here in Nashville, Tennessee. I think that if more people, especially in our community, were aware of this, more people in the South were aware of this, I think they'd put Vandy on blast, and I think they'd have to back down. Because what it seems like really here is it seems like a political agenda. It's a pro-vax political agenda. And you can be pro-vax, you can be anti-vax, it doesn't matter. But when a child's life is on the line, it's not just a moral decision here. 
Now, there are some that could look back at this and say, you know what, I, don't, I disagree with the parents. They need to get their kid vaccinated. The parents are selfish. But it's not just a moral and religious issue. This is also a medical issue. You don't take a six-month-old baby that's already immunocompromised and say, let's pump him full of vaccines before he gets a heart transplant. That is what I think is so important to highlight here is Absolutely. all the way around 360 this is wrong. Absolutely, and I think they messed with the wrong baby because we're not going to stop. I mean, we're going to take this crusade to the very end and make sure that if they do, in fact, have this right, that they no longer have it in the future. And that, that should really be the focus is making sure this can never happen again, but also putting pressure on them in this moment. And they're at, by the way, for people is at VUMC Children on every social platform. Reach out to them on social media. Their pages are being flooded with people, including some people who may disagree with the parents' position, but are saying, you cannot hold this child's life over the parents and coerce them into something. You've got to do the right thing. So that helps a ton as well to raise people's voices there. You know, um, I would encourage people, don't call the actual open medical lines at Vandy because it could impede medical care, but do that other stuff. Reach out on social media and make sure Vanderbilt hears our voices. And is it one doctor? I want to make sure that this is clear. Yes. So there's one doctor that does these heart transplants for, for children, for infants. And it's just one doctor that's standing in the way. Or is this Vanderbilt policy? Because I want to make sure we get that distinction very clear. Yes. Yeah, so this one doctor, Dr. Burl, and I've been praying for him too because, you know, I don't hate the guy. It's just that, you know, I think he's, he's making an absolutely terrible decision here. And I hope God finds his way into his heart and, and changes it and gets him on board with doing the right thing here. But it is that one doctor who did this. He's the head of, uh, or he's part of the transplant coordination team. And that's a potential problem for everybody who goes to Vandy for transplants. So that's something people have to also keep in mind. This isn't just this one baby. This is a doctor that oversees a lot of transplants. This could happen to your child, your husband, your wife, and we have to stand up for this, this defenseless baby because it could be your future family member that we're standing up for who ends up in some terrible accident where they need a transplant. Very ironic that all this is going on in the country right now when we're talking about rights and we're seeing so many in the streets just clamoring for the right to abortion and this, that, and the other. Uh, I talked about it in my, in my opening here, but it's just such a clear line to me of absolute hypocrisy, how you can look at vaccine as, vaccines as something that need to be mandated on everybody, but abortion should be on demand. And I think it's a very weird position that some are taking, but this isn't about politics. This is about the baby and that family should be able to get their baby the proper medical care and not have to worry about compromising the baby's health or their moral and religious convictions to do so. But Robbie, thank you so much for being a voice for this. We're gonna keep up with it. We're gonna blast social media about it because I think it can be really powerful if Vanderbilt is held accountable and Dr. Burl is held accountable and hopefully we can reach him through prayer or through just a whole heck of a lot of social media. Yep. One way or another, I think he'll get the message. Well, thank you so much, Robbie. And thank you for doing this for this family and for being a friend of the show. We know you've got a lot of other things to break regarding Vanderbilt that yep. we're going to see in the coming weeks. And we're going to have you back to talk about all of it because we're here in Nashville and we got to sound the alarm. Yep. Thanks so Absolutely. much for being with me. All right. And up next, the moment you've been waiting for. I have a lot of thoughts on the Roe v. Wade decision. And what I have to say just might surprise you. My final thoughts are next. All right, guys, so no, no sooner did Robbie just walk out of our studio that he actually texted us with some news, and I have him on the phone right now because this is breaking news, and I have him on the phone. Let's take a listen. All right, Robbie, so what is the new information? I know that this just happened. No sooner did you leave than we've got new news, and it's good news. What's going on? Yeah, so the great news is that August is on the transplant list. You know, the concern, though, still is that, you know, I feel like this is probably happening because of the attention that's been brought to his case. And there's still, you know, the possibility, and it's it seems like a high one, that this is going to continue to happen in the future unless something changes, because not every patient who goes in for a transplant is going to have the reach that August was given by getting in contact with us. And so we've got to keep the pressure on Vandy to change this and make Make it a policy the vaccination status will never dictate whether or not you get a transplant and just to make it clear too august has been put on the transplant list but vandy has not come out and said we're dropping this policy they just kind of put him on the list probably to clear some of the smoke from the the social media attention yeah, I mean, all we've gotten so far is um, as soon as I left the studio, I got a call from his mom uh, saying that he was put on the list. Details still being worked out in terms of, you know, how exactly that happened and whatnot. But, um, you know, very happy to at least report that he is on the list. And that's a really, really positive move in the right direction. 
It absolutely is. And, you know, God bless you and this family for fighting, but we need to get this policy changed. We still need to put the absolutely. pressure on Vandy. Vandy needs to make a statement about it at this point. You know, I know that they don't want to be blown up on social media, but unless they're going to change the policy, this is a great win for baby August. But like you said, that there are other babies and other people that are going to be put in this situation that might not always have the social media attention to get them to put on the list. So we need to keep blowing them up and making sure that they understand that uh, we need a full policy change. Absolutely. We can't stop until the policies change, not just at Vandy, but everywhere in Tennessee and in the United States that no child will ever, you know, be given different treatment because of their vaccination status. Well, thank you, Robbie. Keep us updated. This is great news for baby August and please deliver our best to his family as well. Thank you. You too. All right. Thanks, Robbie. So like you said, great news for baby August, but that doesn't mean we don't put the pressure on Vandy and this particular doctor because the policy needs to be changed. They don't like the social media attention, but they're going to have to deal with it still because we need a policy change, not just for one baby, but for all babies and for all people. But up next, I will give my final thoughts on Roe v. Wade coming up. The battle lines between pro-life and pro-choice have been drawn. It's a controversial issue, perhaps one of the most controversial of our time. I myself have been at the center of a lot of that controversy over my career. In fact, I lost my job at my previous network over it. I don't take the typical conservative hardline stance on it, and many conservatives don't like that. Well, that's okay. These are my opinions, and these are my final thoughts. You're welcome to form your own. Roe v. Wade has been overturned by the Supreme Court, and for those who don't understand what that means, it means abortion policy will now fall into the hands of the states. I believe in states' rights, and I do side with the six justices who kicked this down to the states, but here is where things get sticky. Because of this decision and the nature and polarization of the sides, we are now in for the two extremes, neither of which is good. On-demand abortions, late-term abortions, celebrated and glorified abortion is repulsive, ridiculous, and disgusting. But an all-out ban on abortion is counterproductive. Why? You're not going to stop abortions. You're just going to stop safe ones. I know some conservatives prefer to bury their heads in the sand and pretend that's not going to be the case, but we all know better. Both sides are peacocking on this issue and is a disservice to the majority of Americans who exist somewhere on the spectrum with it. Why some on the left are cheerleading abortion as some kind of an accomplishment or something to brag about is reprehensible. Looking at abortion as birth control is irresponsible and it's wrong. So is looking at abortion as something to be done out of convenience or so-called empowerment. Gross and wrong. I don't believe most who are pro-choice fall into that fringe. In fact, statistics show us most Americans are actually pro-life, but with exceptions. Yes. Believe it or not, there is a middle ground between celebrating abortion anytime, anywhere, and for any reason, and a blanket ban. And that's where most Americans are. And the states that choose to all-out ban abortion are likely going to feel the repercussions come election time. And reminder, if we keep losing elections to Democrats, not a single thing in our agenda is going to be accomplished. We are a handful of elections away from socialism at the rate we're going, and we can't afford to lose many more. It's a resurgence of family and American values that's going to put us on the right track, not a blanket ban on abortion in a few red states. Sorry, that's the truth. And to the Christian conservatives out there, I beg you to consider this. We as Christians can't judge, isolate, belittle, or berate women who are getting pregnant out of wedlock and then turn around and say we're pro-life. There needs to be compassion all the way around. It's the faith fellowship, and community support, not the government mandate that's going to convince women to choose life. And I firmly believe that. And furthermore, if we as Republicans aren't willing to provide resources and assistance to help those pregnant, poor, scared, and desperate women, it's not the pro-life movement, it's just pro-birth. There is a hell of a lot more that needs to be done beyond an abortion ban and a pat on the back. This is a highly emotional issue, but calling pro-lifers anti-woman and labeling those who believe in exceptions as baby killers, well, that's not helping. If we kept abortion legal, heavily restricted the timetable, and stopped celebrating it in pop culture as female empowerment, we could actually get somewhere. Safe, legal, rare. And if saying that is controversial and pisses off some of my fellow conservatives, so be it. There are a lot of conservatives who believe the same thing, but they won't say it for fear of having their conservative card taken away. And that's BS. And those are my final thoughts from Nashville. God bless and take care.